So I'd already done some dismantling before I um, remembered to start videoing. So this is actually shot at the end after I'd actually completed the um, modifications, but I'm putting it at the beginning of the video just to show you around. And, and the two things that comprise this project um, is firstly, getting access to the front of this board so that you can remove the old um, existing inaccurate ammeter and replace it uh, with a more accurate one. And then the other thing you're doing is, I'll just turn the see on this edge so you can see, is um, taking out the existing pots and replacing them with these multi-turn pots, which as you can see, I've already, these are the big multi-turn pots, um, the original little pots, uh, far smaller and uh, went in here instead. And one of the things that makes this project a bit, a bit more tricky than it otherwise would be is that this front board is simply held on by these pots and because these replacement pots are much bigger, it pushes this whole board backwards, which wouldn't matter except that the displays for the amp meter and the volt meter um, would then be sitting way too far back from the front of the unit. So you have to somehow work on extending them so that they come forward to meet the front panel. This is the basic interior of the unit. Here you have the um, heavy uh, transformer, just a linear transformer that runs the um, soldering iron and the and the um, heat gun. This board in the center, which is on edge, is the uh, power supply board. Um, down here, we have a dedicated little board uh, that runs the USB outlet, just a little five volt board and then at the front on the what is the what would be the left hand side when you're looking at the front of the unit this is the control board for the um, power supply which has on it um, on the front of it it has the uh, amperage and uh, voltage displays and also has the uh, four pots for controlling the amps and volts there is the usual warning that you see in all these videos um, this main power supply here um, is going to have mains voltage to it. It has very large capacitors which are probably going to be charged up or could be charged up even after you unplug the unit and which could have, well, substantially in excess of mains voltage. It's, it's anything up to about 350 volts in Australia, probably, I'm not sure what in the US, probably about 160, 170 volts. Um, I have not specifically checked to see whether these capacitors have a discharge resistor across them, but um, yeah, your assumption should be that this here could have very high voltage even after you plug the unit out, so it's all the usual precautions of not touching anything until you've discharged the capacitors. Um, and I basically removed the whole board without just by touching on the, on the wires, without touching any of the main components, and just put it to one side on my workbench. Um, you don't actually have to do any work on this unit um, to do the modifications that I'm talking about. It's uh, simply best or easiest to take it out just because otherwise it's a bit difficult to get room to some of the components. You could probably actually do it while leaving that board in there, but I really wanted it out because I didn't want to end up um, killing myself on it. So um, I just took it all out. Um, everything else, it comes out very easily. This is the board on which the uh, voltage and current displays and the uh, four pots for the um, adjustment of amps and volts. Because I didn't start making this video until after I'd already done a fair bit of work on this project, um, there's already been a few changes made. I, I've desoldered this um, unit here, which is uh, which would have been the amps display, and then Originally, there would have been four pots like this um, here, instead of these four blue ones. Uh, these top two are the course adjustments, and they are 10K or 0 to 10K pots, and these are um, 0 to 1K pots. And I replaced the um, original pots, which turn, um, well, I suppose it'd be about 270 degrees or so, with these pots, which are uh, 10 turn pots. So all I did is, is desolder the existing pots. Um, there's just three joints there. Um, they're not held in by any glue or anything. Once you desolder them, you can just pull them straight out. On the original pots, uh, they have three pins pointing down. The center one is the uh, zero. On, on these ones, um, the, there are three contacts on the side. The bottom one is the, the uh, zero contact. And what I had to do was solder on 
um, I don't know whether you're able to see it very easily, but what I had to do was solder on some um, pieces of copper wire to extend those contacts down and through the holes in the board. Um, and then these ones at the back here, um, it's quite a tight fit because these are bigger than the original pots and I actually had to bend the tabs in here so that I could get them all squashed in enough. Um, and I also, to get everything to sit down properly, I also had to shave the tops off these uh, soldered pins here, um, just here and here to get the pots to sit down. I put a blob of um, hot melt glue under each of these pots just to give them a bit of additional strength. As, as far as taking out these displays, or particularly this amperage display here is concerned, it's not the easiest of things. Um, you have to desolder um, all 12 of these contacts. I was able to do, do it using desoldering wick to get rid of, um, to soak up as much of the solder as possible, and then um, to just wiggle each contact to break it free um, from the last of the solder. And then the only way I could actually do it was to get a screwdriver under this side and just gently lever up going around uh, to get it to come out. Um, it's quite tightly held in. So that's where I'm up to with this at the moment. This is the four and a half digit ammeter module that I'm going to insert. Uh, you can find these readily on AliExpress or eBay. Um, they're very commonly used units. Um, I'll provide a link uh, down below as to exactly uh, where I bought mine, but um, there's good reviews for them. I tested this one um, this afternoon and at least based on comparison to my existing multimeters it seems very accurate. Now you don't need all of this unit if you turn it over and I've already started dis disassembling it which is why these plastic bits are falling out but um, if you turn it out over you'll find that all you have to do is pull back a tab here and this little unit comes out. You don't need the plastic housing you don't need this. Now when it comes you'll find that it has, I'm just putting them back just to show you roughly, um, these little connectors which originally had pins in them. This, this side is for your five volt supply which just runs the meter itself. And this side with the much heavier pins, or at least it originally had much heavier pins, um, is for the, the um, current that you're measuring. Now the problem is that there is a lack of room to use these connectors because um, I'm not sure how easy I'm going to be able to show this but to connect this up you'd have to have this on and as you can see it makes it quite tall in this direction and there's not enough room so what you need to do is take these connectors off the simplest way to do that you can't very easily get access to the soldering on the other the, the soldered pins on the other side because they're behind a display but what you can do with this sort of connector is if you get a small screwdriver or a pair of pliers and what you can do is work the plastic piece up off its pins on both sides the same with this one work it up off its pins so the pins are just sticking out then put your soldering iron on this side which you've got plenty of access to and just pull with a pair of pliers that then leaves you with the um, the through holes to which you can then solder wires directly. The difficulty that you have is with the whole arrangement is that these 10 turn pots are a lot fatter um, than the original pots, which as you can see are much smaller and sit much closer to the board. And this means that the hole, when that goes through into the front of the, um, into the, front of the power supply, the whole thing is sitting much back further this way, which means the displays need to be moved out this way. Not only that, but um, this module, which I want to go in here, is quite fat in this direction, particularly because of the shunt here, which sticks right out. Now, I did consider bending this over, but I'm reluctant to do that because I think it might change the resistivity, the resistance of the shunt very slightly, and that will throw the calibration off. So I didn't want to do that. It will fit in here. And as you can see, it, it then pushes the display out so that it's pretty close to perfectly in line with the tops of the pots. I don't know how easily you can see that. What I've done is get a couple of small pieces of um, uh, waste circuit board and just cut some little legs that are just slightly higher than the uh, shunt here. 
so that this will now sit like that on the board uh, with the shunt just slightly off the surface of the board. When the new ammeter is in place, the shunt here will be very close to the circuit board. It'll only be separated by a millimetre or so. And I was just a bit worried that the uh, shunt might touch some of the contacts down in here and do terrible things. So I've put a couple of layers of captain tape over the relevant part of the board so that it should insulate the board from the uh, shunt. This one here is too low. Um, it would sit probably a good seven or eight millimeters away from the, uh, the front screen. So I'm going to be putting something underneath this to raise it up so that it's uh, level with the top of the pots. Now the solution that I come up with, and hopefully this will focus on here, is to use some of this um, single row IC um, socket pin material. You can buy it up into long lengths. I think I bought this in a length of 32 pins. And what I'm gonna do is just stack these to get the right height. Um, so you can see on this one here, I've, I've um, started stacking them. Um, and I found that two is about right. So what I've done is taken a row of six of these another row of six socketed them together and then socketed the the um, display into those and I'll solder that in the board and then I'll do the same on the other side and that thankfully works out to be almost exactly within about um, a millimeter um, the right height okay so here's here's my stacks of um, of IC pins to lift my little display up off the board this is the power supply to the USB outlet for the 9305D. Uh, the mains power comes in here, this larger three pin connector, and the five volts for the USB power comes out on this little connector here. Um, this is the uh, connector, and at the other end of the connector, there is this little piece of uh, circuit board material uh, from the markings on it. It's got markings for all sorts of other components, and I suspect that what they've done is they've just recycled some old bits of um, circuit board that happened to have the right pinouts for a USB connection and they've just used that um, and then here's so here's where the five volts power comes in and it so happens that if you look here you can see there's a couple of pins here um, these two on the right that uh, are across the uh, five volt supply and so what I'm going to do is use those as the um, as the outlet for the um, five volt supply to the new little ammeter. So what I did is, um, I, this is the little ammeter, and it had this two pin connector here um, for the five volt input. So what I'm gonna do is take that little connector that I, I uh, desoldered off the ammeter solder it in here and then use the little cable that they supplied with the ammeter to connect from here onto the connections here on on the back of the ammeter i'll sol make that a solder a permanent solder connection just a little tip for you the soldering pads on this little USB board are on this side and that's also the side that you're wanting to solder the component on. What I've done is um, push the pins, you can actually push the pins through these connectors. So what I've done is push them most of the way through so that I can put the component in there like that, get access to soldering it and then afterwards I'll push the plastic component down onto it um, to put it into place. So that's my little connector now soldered into the USB uh, board. Um, it's not the neatest job because of the, the solder underneath the socket, but it'll do. Um, just so that you can, you can work this out for yourself but pretty easily. But uh, the uh, positive is on this side here, furthest from the USB connector. And the connector goes in that way around. And uh, that now goes in here. Okay, I've now soldered the five volt leads in. Um, just to be clear, the two 
contacts you want are the two inner ones. There's the positive and the negative, and the one on the furthest outside is not used. The original connection from the main board of the power supply to the banana plugs on the front panel of the power supply uh, was through this connector. Um, but what I'm going to have to do is route uh, one side of this through the shunt in my new ammeter so that the ammeter can measure the current. Um, now, to do that, what I've done is taken um, the black wire out of the connector. I imagine most of you know how to do that, but, but if you don't, on the, on the housing of the connector, there's a little tab here. And if you push down on, on, on this end, I'll zoom in on that. If you push down on this end of the connector here, of this little tab with a sharp implement, while pulling the cord, the cord will come out. Um, it'll just slide out. After you've done that, you might be able to see there, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but on the back, there's a little metal tab, which is the sort of barb that, that causes it to click in. And you may need to just lift that up a little. Don't bend it up too much or it'll snap off, just so that it clicks back in the next time you use it. Now, when you get your little replacement ammeter, it comes with one of these same sorts of connectors that would originally have gone on here, but as I've mentioned, I don't have room for that. So instead, what I'm going to do is um, discard the red wire, and then I'm going to have this black wire, which I may as well do it now, will uh, click in here into the uh, connector which goes onto the main board, and that will come across and be soldered onto the uh, negative side of the shunt here. And then I'm going to take this um, black wire here with the uh, ring connector on the end. I'll just actually snip off the connector because that's not necessary. And that will be going there to form a, a triangle for the power. Um, the spec for this ammeter does say that you should be routing the negative wire through the uh, shunt. I don't know if that would actually be important, but that's what they suggest. One of the things that I realised later on in the build was that the um, USB power supply here is on at all times. And so if you hook the um, new uh, ammeter module here um, up directly to the 5 volt USB power supply, it is on all of the time, even if even if you haven't got the um, power supply side of the board on through this switch. So what I've done is replace the original power supply side switch with this switch, which is a uh, double pole single throw switch in exactly the same sizing. You can see it here. Originally you had the uh, hot wire comes in from the uh, main board input, one side of which goes to here on the main uh, power supply board, the other side of which the, the neutral, well I'm assuming it's the neutral anyway, the black, um, came in here to this switch, through that switch and then back down to the uh, main power supply here. Now, um, so I've just took that back up to one side of this now double pole switch. I explained earlier that on the back of the little USB PCB down in here, I added this connector here to go to the uh, new ammeter in here. So what it, now, the way it now works is that one side of it, in this case the black, just goes directly from this uh, connector here directly into the ammeter. You can't see it, but it goes in and around behind there. And then the other side of that um, I've uh, cut into, and one of its wires comes over here into the other pole of this switch and then back out and then into the board. And in this way, when you use this switch to turn the power supply side on or off, it now not only turns on and off the power supply, but it also, um, the other pole of this new switch, this double pole switch, uh, now turns the ammeter off. Here's the new ammeter. 
Um, as you can see, it's now got far more significant digits in it. I'll just now give you a quick demonstration of it actually working. Um, I've turned this side on, as you can see, I'm using a car bulb as a, as a load just because it's a nice simple resistive load that'll cope with varying uh, current. Um, I can't take it above 14 volts or I'll blow the bulb. Um, I've put this meter in series with the uh, power supply just so you can compare the uh, amps here with the amps on the new display. Now this is just a little cheapy meter, I managed to blow my good meter up the other day so I've only got one little cheapy meter. Um, right, so if I connect this bulb up, you can now see that um, it's pretty close. Uh, the, 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 the new ammeter is showing 1.86 and yeah, it's, it's pretty much in agreement. It's, it's maybe 10 or 20 milliamps out, but um, I'd probably trust my new ammeter before I'd trust the uh, cheap ammeter anyway. So I've now, I've now got this set to um, 8 volts. I now can't restrict that down just to look at the milliamp range 0.245 of an amp there 0.247 there so that's um, yeah within two millivolts which is very close um, so it's a massive improvement on the previous ammeter I'm, I'm very happy with it but where before this control was so coarse that it was hard to get on exact voltage it's now multiple turns to get it to um, a correct voltage so I don't even have to worry about the fine you can use the fine it does make a difference but really if I want to go down to say 10 volts it's very easy to just home in on it there it is so just to wrap up on the hands kit 9305d my final thoughts I hope this is my last video of uh, well I'm up to three now if you've watched all the videos you'll know that when I first got it there were three things I wasn't happy with one was that the uh, heat gun did not necessarily turn off when you put it back in its holder unless you put it in exactly the right way. I've improved that somewhat by adding some additional um, reed switches in here around the barrel so that it now basically doesn't matter which way around you put it, it always turns off so that's good. Um, the other next criticism I had was that the um, using a single I guess 270 degree turn pot uh, to go all the way from 0 to 30 volts or 0 to 5 amps uh, it was just um, too coarse um, even with the fine knob it just it's just too coarse it was very hard to find the right voltage uh, I've now got 10 turn pots for all of these um, and it's good now it's it's really good you can find the voltage you want very easily the final thing I wasn't happy with and probably the thing that I really was most unhappy with was that the ammeter was just terribly inaccurate it could be anything up to 10 percent out which is hopeless um, and so I've got rid of the ammeter that comes with the machine and I've added um, my own ammeter that, and uh, now it's, you've got um, really quite considerable accuracy in everything from the um, milliamps right through to the multiple up to 5 amp um, range so I'm quite happy with it now but it has been quite a bit of work to um, get it all um, how I like it um, in terms of expense none of it's really expensive it's, it was really just um, I can't even remember now but probably 10 or 20 dollars for the for the um, reed switches for the pots and for the um, uh, the replacement ammeter no great expense there it's mostly just in time anyway so it's now probably um, quite a quite a workable machine if you got any use out of this video or you just enjoyed watching it then um, yeah I wouldn't mind if you could um, hit the like button and maybe think about subscribing